Where is everybody? Good evening, everyone. Today is another spectacular day here at Universal's City Walk. We are here to experience more dining and hopefully make our way over to some of those resorts. Those are some I've never seen before. I have never seen the Universal Resorts and I really want to try and experience them at least a little bit. Just kind of walk through them. Maybe we'll stay there one day in the future. You never know. Our first stop today is Big Fire. Now, we were thinking about Big Fire and Cowfish. We really did enjoy Cowfish quite a bit, but Big Fire is another one that's rated really, really well. Let's go inside and give it a try. I love the fact that out here they have a big, big fire. You get, yeah, yeah, it's a big fire. Really nice feel to it. Rustic feel. I like that a lot. Nice tables, chairs. Let's go find our spot. Sure enough, we've made it to our table here at Big Fire. No wait at all. We had no reservations. Just walked right up. Super, super nice. Looking at the menu here, there are some really good looking items. The fried chicken is the recommended item by our host. But that bison burger is really calling my name. Trying to find another amazing bison burger. We'll see what our server thinks. Now our server, Eric, recommended anything on the off the embers section of the menu. So the trout, salmon, lamb chop, pork chop, and of course those steaks as well. I'm tempted, I am, I really am. But somehow I'm just feeling like bison. One of those days where I'm like, all right, Bison's on my mind. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go with the bison burger. It's gonna be tough for me to say anything else at this point. I feel like my mind's already made up before I have much thought about anything else like steaks. And it comes with the side, any side you want. I was thinking about fries, but then there's also this pork belly mac and cheese. Sure enough, we have ordered here at Big Fire. David, you have? I have the wild salmon. With those potatoes? With the crispy smashed potatoes. And the pork belly mac and cheese. And I have the bison burger medium rare with the fries. He said the pork belly mac and cheese was only okay, not the best he ever had. So I'm gonna try that, see how it is. Sure enough, our food has arrived. I've got the bison burger there with the fries. Looks super, super good. Kind of a small portion of fries there, but we're gonna find out how they taste. David has that salmon filet there with the pork belly mac and cheese. Maybe if I ask nicely, he'll let me try a little bit of it and he'll try some of my bison burger. Let's dig in. Starting it off with David's pork belly mac and cheese. Between this and the shrimp mac and cheese that we had at Volcano Bay, there's, it's very hard to compare it to that, but not a bad one. In comparison, let's try another one. What do you think, one of my fries? Sure. Let's try it. Very good. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. I love this one. What do you think, Dave? I can see why he recommended you get the fries over the mac and cheese. Yeah. You know, I was like, you can't lose with mac and cheese. The fries are just, it's so well done, so amazingly done. Must be what they're known for is that, that kind of grilled cooking stuff. Yep. Now I'm gonna try one of David's crushed potatoes, kind of different. You can taste a little bit of the smoky flavor in there. Tiny bit of it, but in my opinion, the fries win by far. Here it is, the medium rare bison burger. You ready, David? Yes. All right, let's do it. Considering the bison burger competition, this really does hold up well, in my opinion. A very good one. I can see myself getting it again but not my favorite bison burger of all time. It still goes to Geyser Point. David, your thoughts? Honestly, that's a big reason why I didn't get the bison burger. Something I was gonna ask, say to you when you ordered it. I'm like, I'm gonna ask him what sauces are on that because right. I don't think it's marionberry and garlic aioli. Yep. That being said, as a bison burger without all those special sauces, it's a great burger. I really do enjoy it. And there was a, a kind of a tough piece in there, kind of tin or something like that kind of bit on and I wasn't sure what to do about that, but otherwise, really do like this one. Definitely juicy, but I feel like it's just that flavor difference between this one and Geyser Point, so not bad, not my favorite. Now time to try some of David's salmon filet, bon appetit. I'm definitely getting that smoky taste to it, that they're going for here at Big Fire, that smoky, smoky taste. Not bad, but I prefer more of a salmon taste to my salmon, that's me personally. If you love that smoky taste though, you might love this one. This could be a favorite for you. I can see it, but just not for me. David, your thoughts? I agree with you on this one. I, I feel that smoky flavor and I like that smoky flavor but honestly considering that this place is about the smoky flavors I probably should have gone for like a steak or a burger or something like that that pairs better with that smoky flavor because I also like my salmon more salmon flavored not bad at all but it does have that smoky taste to it so overall thoughts not bad not bad at all but between this and cowfish, I would go back to cowfish much, much faster because even though we didn't love, love cowfish, you can taste the difference in the potential. Can you, you can taste potential. Is that? I, I agree. Yeah. Like the quality of the ingredient. Yeah. It's a very big difference there. So not bad, but cowfish was still on my, the highest priority on my list. For City Walk. For highest priority at, at City Walk. Sure enough, we have the dessert menu here and the burger was good. I'm pretty full, but David, you're thinking about dessert already. Might just have to try it since we're here. Since we're here. You, you, you gotta point. give it a shot. 
Look at this skillet baked chocolate cake. Oh my gosh, flourless chocolate cake, cherries, and bourbon ice cream. I love a small amount. Very small. He's gonna eat it all. No, I'm not. And here it is, the flourless chocolate cake from Big Fire here at City Walk. It smells good, but considering it's a nine dollar dessert, it's extremely small. Now, if the taste justifies that, you never know, so we're gonna find out. Bon appetit. First bite is super intense chocolate. Super, super intense, and the ice cream, it said bourbon ice cream, it tastes alcoholic to me, um, but it's just ice cream. The cake itself, it's interesting, it's very like dry, but then not dry. It's extremely difficult to describe. I think I need a second bite. The chocolate's good, but the ice cream is definitely filled with alcohol. You really get that flavor in there. I'm not a big alcohol fan, so for me, it's like that flavor kind of throws it off. I just like the chocolate by itself. For $9, I would not get it, just because I've had much better chocolate items myself and at other places, but not bad. So it's like not, not bad food, it's just not something I go out of my way for. David, your thoughts? I like it. I don't love it. I'm not blown away by it, but I do like it. It's It's got that... Like sort of like you said, it's got a flourless chocolate cake flavor. You can definitely taste the bur very strong bourbon flavor in that ice cream. So overall, very unique. It's good, but I'm not sure I would get it again. I'm a little worried I'm gonna have too much of this bourbon ice cream. I don't think I'm gonna have any more of it. Just the chocolate cake alone. <laughs> chocolate cake by itself. Overall, big fire, it's okay. It definitely would not go out of my way for it. Okay, on for more City Walk and Universal Adventures. Sitting outside Big Fire now, I gotta tell you, one of my favorite parts of the restaurant, to be honest with you, this outside seating area with the fire right here. Even though it's, I believe, about 70 degrees, we can see fireworks from Universal way out there. And a nice warm fire right here. Yeah, this is nice. I never thought I would enjoy a fire at like 70 degrees. It's cold. <laughs> it's not that cold. Cool. Are we, the 80s. No, see, this is the problem. In August, we're gonna say, oh, we wish we had this weather. You, I, okay, I will say I wish I had this weather. All right, we're heading towards those boats now on the water, which will apparently take us to those resorts. Now, you've seen me break my diet enough times. Now, I wanted to tell you some moments where I'm not breaking my diet. Here's Voodoo Donuts as an example. I'm tempted, super tempted, not gonna get anything because I'm being strong. We're actually catching the fireworks outside of the park here. Very, very cool. It looks like the finale right there. Ta-da! I have yet to see the fireworks show here at Universal. A lot of things to experience. Now, David, you've never been to these resorts. That's correct. I've never been to these resorts. Which one are we going to first? I have no idea. Okay, we're going to flip a coin or something. There are three sure. of them. We'll see. Talking about it now, maybe we'll base it on the line length. So whatever is the shortest line, we'll go on. But maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe that means the boat just left. Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort, Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort, and Hard Rock Hotel. There's also Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel. So there are four. I guess we're going this way. Probably headed to the Hard Rock Hotel, but you can see there are two boats right over there. These big signs indicating where we're going. All right, we found the line. We're headed to the Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel. Here we go. All right, City Walk, we will see you later. We're headed to a brand new location that we've never seen before here at Universal Resort. Here we are at Portofino Bay. Take a look, very cool. And I think I can see boats out there in the water. Wow, looking forward to exploring a little bit. Here we are at Portofino Bay Hotel. Very, very interesting looking, really nice to it. I really like all the boats right there in the water. Kind of hard to see at night, but there are small like just boats just for decoration throughout the water here. Very, very cool. We're gonna go do a little exploring. Portofino Bay, super, super quiet, surprisingly quiet. You can see the resort itself. Very interesting theming on the outside here. Looks like just kind of regular buildings, like something you'd find maybe in Italy. Really cool. Right off the bat, my favorite part, those boats out in the harbor. I think that's the, the look they're going for, and I love it. I think that was a very smart idea. Here we are making our way to what I would call the marketplace of the Portofino Bay. A little Vespa scooter right there. Super cool. You can sit back and relax. Photo up right there. And then it kind of just kind of slopes down to the water over here. Thirsty Fish Bar right there. Might have to check that out one day in the future. And then this very large open area. And just take a look at this. You've got the Italian flags right here. And then you kind of look over here. Look at this. There's nothing, there's nothing between us and the water right there. There's no fence, no barricade. I'm not going to get too close, you know. But it's very interesting to see, like, the theming goes all the way down to the water. I see a gallery over there, Universal Studios store, so merchandise over there. Starbucks coffee, 
right there, it's important to note. And I'm seeing Studio Fotografico. So that's Photo Studio, and then I'm guessing this is dining. Trattoria Al Porto right here. It's a restaurant, it's a sit-down restaurant. You can see a sign right here where they lift, where everything else is all around the resort. The spa, the Thirsty Fish Bar, they've got the restaurant, beach and villa pool, and then there's stairs that take us up there. It kind of looks like very interesting stairs here. These stairs kind of bring us to another courtyard here, which is shockingly totally abandoned. My question is, where is everybody? Are they in the room or maybe just out and about at City Walk? Because Universal is now closed. They closed for the night. Where, where is everybody? The shop over there, there's a pizza restaurant here, and then just rooms? Wow, kind of surprised that that's all that I'm seeing all around here. Again, super, super, super quiet. Nobody here. So walking through this way, okay, it says hotel lobby that way. But at this, there's a pathway this way. This area brings us to another extremely large courtyard. This one has grass all around and no one. Literally, I have not seen anyone. Actually, wait a minute, I see some folks all the way down there, but considering all things considered, it's a pretty quiet resort. All right, we're gonna make our way in here, which I imagine is our way to the lobby. Not sure. A couple conference rooms here. Looks like they're perhaps holding a convention in this resort. I'm not sure, maybe this is Universal's convention resort. Yep, looks like it. Continuing on here, it looks like some kind of lobby right over here. Look at this. This is a very nice lobby, but it's not the hotel lobby. It's just kind of a, a secondary lobby. Take a look at the gazebo right there, basically in the middle of this passageway inside Portofino Bay. Wow. There's a helm right there. There's a kind of captain's quarters over there. Just following the hallways down. Look at this. All interior. This is not outside. This is inside. And there's no one. Look around. Look around. No one. No one. No one. One security guard right over there. Lobby this way. And then meetings and ballrooms that way. Right, look at this. Look at this theming. This is very, very impressive. Even lighting in the windows. These passageways. This is, this is very, very impressive. I, I'm impressed. Okay, here we are. Here's the main lobby right here. Now, for reference, the time is 8.44 p.m. This is the main lobby of Portofino Bay. There's the check-in desk. No one at the check-in desk. Here's kind of a seating area. No one, no one here. Oh, one person there, way over there. But yeah, that's very interesting. Bar American right here. A super nice theme in here. This is super, super nice. Look at these lights up above there, and I love the ceilings. Very, very cool. Let's step outside the front entrance for a moment. We'll go back the way we came, but I just want to take a look just at the front. Doors opening automatically here, and there we are with this nice tile work right there. Dolphins right down there. And then look at this. This is the entranceway where guests would be to check in for Portofino Bay. There's one guest making their way right now in the car right there. And take a look. There's a fountain right up there. Nice. The level of detail at this resort is very, very impressive. Really feel like I've been transported to Italy here. Now I have a theory why this resort is so empty right now. I think this is actually pretty uncommon to see it like this. There's no way for me to know for sure. This is a theory, but I would imagine that it's because of this time of year. Usually it's kind of slower this time of year. Disney's got those run events going on. Th there isn't as much in terms of special events happening at Universal right now besides the Mardi Gras events. So I would imagine that most often it's pretty crowded, but for now we're finding it at a super, super quiet, empty time. And I gotta tell you, I, I like this a lot. Now we just learned that you can either take the boat back to City Walk or take one of the Universal buses to another one of the Universal resorts, which I feel like would save us a lot of time. So I think that's what we're gonna do, but deciding which one to go to, that's, that's the hard part. At the bus depot now, and the very friendly team member told us that it should be here in about uh, six minutes. So it'll be 9, 10 at night. So we're just waiting here for the next bus that should take us to Hard Rock, which we plan on getting off at, but deciding as we go. Now, David had a really good point. We are at Lowe's Portofino Bay, right. and you mentioned there's another Lowe's one. Yes, the Royal Pacific. It's supposed to be Hawaiian themed, and really the reason I observed it is there's sushi rolls at the Royal Pacific on the ad behind us here. Okay. I'm not hungry. And no, neither am I. Ate. Yeah, we already ate. But I like the Hawaiian feel, you okay. know, kind of the natural islands. But I feel like that'd be a fun one to check out. All right, let's take the bus to Royal Pacific. So I should note, I don't really care for the music too much uh, here. <laughs> 
at the resort. I, you know, it's fine. It's just, there's a lot of just like classic music that, you know, just, it's fine, but it's not my favorite. My preferred style music for uh, this resort with its great Italian theme would be from the Italian Pavilion at Epcot. I know, I know. This big Disney fan. Time is now 9.18. Still waiting for that bus. Hopefully it comes soon. Uh, if not, uh, we might take the boat back. Still deciding. We'll, we'll figure it out, but come on, bus. So we've been standing here for 20 minutes. No bus. I'm gonna ask someone right here at the front when the bus is supposed to arrive. Extremely accommodating here at the front. I told them exactly what happened. We were there for 20 minutes, and they said, we'll come around, and we'll take you exactly where you want to go. That, that's very interesting customer service. That's, if it turns out, I'm gonna be impressed. Van, pull around here pretty quick. Yep, that looks like our transportation. So we work for uh, the hotel, we work for Lowe's. Oh, okay. Uh, sure enough, the bus did not come, but the Lowe's employees went out of their way, got a separate van for us in about 60 seconds, were there, picked us up, and brought us right here to Royal Pacifica. So big, big points right there to Lowe's and the resorts here. Very good customer service right off the bat. As we walk in here, you can see these little frogs right here and this uh, bamboo bridge as we walk across. Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort, Universal Orlando. Welcome to it. As we first walk in, you can tell very different from the Polynesian Village Resort, no doubt about it. But it's got some of the feel, tile floor right there, but some of the feel, especially up there in the ceiling. You can see it's a super, super large lobby and a lot more people here than at the other resort. Vacation planning center, luggage services, concierge, and then check-in right over here. Not that many people, I mean, not that many people, but there's some around. Lobby's this way, but you can actually make your way, yep, yes you can, outside to this courtyard right here. A very, very cool courtyard. We can see the fountains right there, and there are actually elephants in the water playing right there. Hard to see at night but super cool. I really like this fountain here in a nice seating area right here, super quiet and relaxing. Now let's make our way through this door. You can find restrooms right there and then tower windward rooms over there. There's a restaurant, uh, orchard court, sushi bar this way. Very interesting theming, not like any other sushi bar I've seen before. A lot of that white tile all around, but super nice. Gotta try it at some point in the future. Tower rooms three over here for more of those rooms, and it brings us back to the lobby. So it's one big circle right here, and then you've got Starbucks and just a general quick service spot right here. This is the Tuk Tuk Market, or Tuk Tuk Market. Not sure which one, but nice. And of course, they've got those refillable mugs. This one says Royal Pacific on it. I'm wondering if it only works for Royal Pacific or if it works for the other resorts as well. I will ask to find out, but a little bit different from the resort refillable mugs at Disney. Take a look, it opens this way. See that? The top opens that way instead of this sliding top that we're used to. $9.99 for one day, $15.99 for three days, and $18.99 for length of the stay. I'm gonna ask if I could, these can be used at other resorts. They also serve coffees, there's pastries, donuts right there, quick service items. I see parfaits, salads, sandwiches, fruit, vegetables, oatmeal, and a seating area right over here. Wow, this, this is nice. So just found out that these mugs, this one right here, the refillable mug, very, very important, will only work, get this, in Royal Pacific and only work in Tuk Tuk Market. This mug will only work here, nowhere else on Universal property. That's good to know. That's just an important note. I really like how everything is located right around this circle here. You can find sushi bar, you can find your tuk-tuk market, check-in concierge, you can find rooms in those directions. Now we're actually gonna make our way down towards the water, find some more. Found our way outside now, Royal Pacific Arcade, right there, Mariner's Club, right here, which I imagine is kind of a small shop, and there's a pool right over there. To a closer look here, Mariner's Club is the kids' club. Good to know. Pool's closing in 10 minutes. Let's go inside for just a minute to take a look around. You can see volleyball is still going on right over there. The Royal Bali Sea kind of slides over there. Super nice, overall relaxing feel. Not the smallest pool, definitely not the smallest, but not the largest either. Take a look, here's the gym right here. A lot of machines in here. I'm getting the feel as I walk around these resorts that it is mostly for conventions. Seeing a ton of conventioners here. Maybe it's just the time of year, maybe it's just me visiting, but that's what it feels like. Do like the rock work all around. It has a great feel to it right there. Love this artwork right here. Super, super large, but it looks like kind of a combination of maybe like an Indian with maybe the Hawaiian. I'm not 100% sure about this one, but it is super nice. Take a look at this theming right here. I love that kind of style right there in front. And it's got that three-dimensional to it right there. You can see like the orange glow 
behind it. Those are great right there. Definitely extremely easy to get lost here, but the resort continues to go on in that direction, more over there. We'll come back and explore more another day, no doubt about it, but I'm headed toward the water taxis now, which I think are in this direction. Time is now 9.53, perfect time to go through security, which I cannot film in that direction and get on that water taxi. And here we are back on the boat towards CityWalk. Overall, fun day, was it fun? It was very fun. It really was exploring some of those resorts. We'll do more in the future. Sounds good. No doubt about it. And just like that, we are back at CityWalk. Very, very cool experience. So tonight we did Royal Pacific and we did Portofino Bay Hotel. We still have got to get to Hard Rock and the Sapphire Falls Resort. And there's a couple others too that we were told about. Cabana Bay? There's a bunch, there's a bunch okay. of them. Yeah, we haven't figured out all the names yet, but there are more. There are more to experience. A great adventure around Universal, some of those resorts, and City Walk. A lot of fun. Next time we're going to Calfish or another restaurant, for sure, when we visit City Walk again. Thanks so much for sharing in the magic with us today. It was a lot of fun sharing it all with you. Until next time. Have a magical day. And see you real soon.